To better understand the mood and expectations of Russians heading to the polls, we're joined by Denis Volkov, a sociologist from Moscow-based pollster's Levada Center. Denis, the polls conducted by your center, as well as, albeit to a lesser degree, to other Russian pollsters, indicate that ratings for the United Russia Party are falling. Why do you think that is? This downward trend is not new. It started about a year and a half ago. After the annexation of Crimea in March 2014, support for United Russia started to rise and peaked in May to June of 2015, similar to Putin's ratings. After this, they started to slide, slowly but surely. Only for United Russia, Putin's personal rating is still very high. By mid-2015, it stood at 50% of all respondents, including undecided voters. Then it slid to around 40% by spring 2016, and now it's around 30%. But bear in mind, this 30% will translate for United Russia to about 50% of the real vote at the polling stations, and even more if we take into account redistribution of votes cast for parties that ultimately won't pass the barrier into Parliament. Among the reasons for this slide, observers cite the unpopular decision not to index link pensions to inflation and the number of new parties allowed to take part. This drags attention away from the four main parliamentary factions. Do you see these as decisive factors? Partly all that is true, but I think this slide is mostly driven by the normalization, by cooling down of emotions after the Crimean enthusiasm started to wane. Economic factors are important and Russians do feel the pinch of the crisis, but the crisis acts on them very slowly. People are slow to realize or feel personally its effects and then they adapt quickly. New parties, yes, but most of them are unknown to the larger electorate. Yes, they dilute the lists a bit and will steal a bit of support from United Russia, but I repeat, a decline in ratings is mostly driven by the long-term global trend of a ruling party simply losing its popularity. And how will this dissatisfaction influence the turnout? I think the turnout will be influenced more by the fact that the election was moved from December to September. People are still going to the countryside at the weekend, and the campaign in the summer passed largely unseen. In December the turnout is traditionally high, but in September it's not. It's hard to give an exact prediction, but it will be less. And there's less general interest towards this vote. You aren't hearing people debating it on their commute. They're not discussing it. I think public opinion is being drawn away from this election. Maybe the authorities are interested in a smaller turnout. That way only highly disciplined voters will come, those who vote not so much to express their view and influence the state assembly, but out of habit as a civic duty because it has to be done. And finally, what will be the dominant trend? Desire to change or apathy? I think apathy, but new liberal parties are to blame here too because they virtually haven't run any real campaign in big cities where their main electorate lives. So my main qualm with them and even from their supporters is that they're invisible, that people can't see the changes within those parties, that those parties appear just as they were before the election. Nobody knows anything about them, and they only talk instead of act. Dennis Volkov from the Levada Center, thank you for your insight.